We're now live. Uh, it's one o'clock, so we'll make a start um, and welcome to everybody to this virtual cabinet meeting of the 20th of July. Uh, I am obliged to inform you that this meeting is being live streamed and recorded. Members of the public are able to hear and view the papers displayed during the broadcast of the meeting. This meeting is being held using remote technology and should any cabinet members experience technical difficulties during the meeting, they should immediately contact the telephone number previously given. Councillors are requested to mute their microphones unless asked to speak. The chat function may be used to indicate the desire to speak. As leader, I will interpret the council's existing standing orders in light of the requirements uh, of remote participation with advice from the monitoring officer prior to making a ruling. Um, at the start of the meeting, I will ask members of the cabinet to confirm their presence and any interests. I will ask everyone that speaks during the meeting, including members of the cabinet, group leaders or officers, to introduce themselves before they speak. Uh, right, moving on. Item one is apologies. Do we have any apologies? I've received no apologies. Uh, right, thank you. Uh, item two, roll call and disclosable pecuniary interests. Uh, members are reminded to disclose any pecuniary interests in any men matters to be discussed, which are not included on their register of interests and to leave the meeting prior to the matter being discussed. Uh, therefore, I will go through the list of members and ask them to uh, uh, tell us that they're here and whether they have any interests or not. So we start with Gwilym Butler. Uh, thank you, Leader. Councillor Gwilym Butler, Communities, uh, Rural Affairs and Regulatory Services. Um, no interest to declare. Uh, Councillor Lee Chapman. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Lee Chapman, no interest to declare on the agenda. Uh, Councillor Steve Charmley. Thank you, Leader. Yes, I'm here and no, no interest to declare. Councillor Dean Carroll. Present and no interests to declare leader. Councillor Steve Davenport. Present and no interest leader. Councillor Rob Macy. Present and no interest to declare. Councillor David Minnery. Present leader and no interest to declare. Councillor Leslie Picton. Present and no interest to declare leader. Councillor Ed Potter. Um, present and on the item on the local plan after taking advice from the monitoring officer um, I although not a pecuniary interest I will not take part in the discussions or voting on this item as uh, an employee of mine is very closely cited one of, with one of the sites being promoted and a number of my customers of my business are also um, promoting sites within this item to be discussed on the local plan. So I will leave the meeting and not part, take part in any of the discussions or voting. OK, thank you. That's noted. Um, other people who are present are the group leaders. So Roger Evans. 
Uh, present and no declarable interest. Councillor Alan Mosley. Present and no interest. And Councillor Pauline D. Present and no interest. And then I've also got members attending who intend to ask questions. So there's Councillor David Turner. Present. And Councillor David Basma. Present and no interest to declare. Right. And then we should have officers here. Karen Bradshaw's on holiday, but Andy Begley. Yeah, confirmed present. Thank you. Uh, Mark Barrow. Present leader. James Walton. Yes, present. Uh, Michelle Leith. Yes, present. Claire Porter. Yes, present. And Julie Files, our committee officer. Yes, present. OK, right. We move on. Then. I'm, also, I'm also present chair as well, Paul Milner. Yeah, no, we, we'll we'll work that out as we go along. Right. So we move on to item three, uh, which are the minutes of the 6th of July. Uh, oh, and they're going to be deferred until the next meeting of cabinet because it's it's quite quick after it. So we then move on to item four, public questions. Now, there are quite a long list of public questions and we'll go through them one by one. Uh, and the first of the public questions is from uh, Leslie Durbin. So is Leslie present or is somebody going to read the question out for him? Um, uh, uh, leader, this is Claire Porter, Director of Legal and Democratic Services. I will read out the public questions on behalf of the public. Um, there are um, a lot of lengthy submissions, Leader, so um, I will be limiting it to the actual question, but I do know that cabinet members have received all the background and explanations and preamble behind those questions for their information. So, okay. Leader, the first question is from um, Mrs. Leslie Durbin. She, she has three questions and the first one is, why have Shropshire Council not undertook a consultation, examination and referendum as advised by government to determine if the community of Much Wenlock are in support of the development MUW012 and are willing to have the important underpinning policies of their neighbourhood plan changed? The second question, why were Much Long much Wenlock and Cressage, two entirely separate communities, each with their own concerns, merged into one survey document, which resulted in skewed analysis of the Much Wenlock community response to MUW 012, which did not which did not resonate with other independent community consultations. The third question is: Does the cabinet agree that it is not supporting and encouraging the Much Wenlock Town Council to properly engage with the community? There has been no meaningful dialogue with the community, a stated requirement in your SCI. That's the end of her question. Thank you. OK, thank you, Claire. Um, I'm going to ask Councillor Rob Macy to respond. Rob. Thank you, Leader, and thank you for allowing so many public questions at the meeting. Um, you'll be hearing from me a lot. In response to question one, it's the responsibility of the Shropshire Lo Shropshire local plan to plan appropriately for the period to 2038, which is 12 years beyond the end of the current plan period for the Much Wenlock Neighbourhood Plan. Once adopted, the Shropshire local plan will form, form part of the development plan for the area, alongside other adopted or made neighbourhood plans, including Much Wenlock Neighbourhood Plan. Where there is a conflict between the two plans, the most recently adopted plan takes precedence. However, in this instance, the Shropshire Local Plan has sought to both acknowledge and reflect the principles of the Much Wenlock Neighbourhood Plan within the proposed strategy for the town. This is captured in policy S13.1 of the pre-submission draft local plan, which specifically states the policies and proposals within the neighbourhood plan which conform to the local plan continue to apply. The proposals for Much Wenlock will be subject to independent examination by the planning inspectorate in the same manner as the rest of the Shropshire local plan. Uh, in answer to question two, the, for the purposes of presentation, the local plan process has used place plan areas to capture a range of settlement strategies. Place plan areas seek to reflect functional linkages between areas, usually between a main town and its rural hinterland. But the individual strategies for specific settlements reflect the characteristics of these areas in establishing sustainable growth proposals. 
And in answer to question three, Shropshire Council has and continues to work closely with town and parish councils in seeking to support meaningful local engagement with communities on the local plan. And this is a key feature of the statement of community involvement, the SCI referred to in the question. We will be providing further guidance notes to town and parish councils as part of the consultation on the pre-submission draft local plan. Cabinet therefore does not agree that it has failed to support much when locked town council in seeking to support local engagement. Okay, thank you. Um, the second question is from Mr. and Mrs. Brian Jackson. Claire, Claire Porter, are you uh, going yes. to read this out? Claire? Thank you, thank you, leader. Why is a site, a site in Much Wenlock, a town that is unequal, has at an equal flood risk as Bos, Boscastle, even being considered for a major housing development on a field that floods frequently, causing damage to homes and properties? It's the end of that question. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, I'll go to Councillor Rob Macy, the portfolio holder. Rob. Thank you, Leader. Um, now, we had a number, we've had a number of questions which we'll come on to subsequently that all covered this, the main thrust of this um, subject. So this answer will be the response to a number of questions. So when I refer to it later on, this will be the, the response we're referring to. Um, so it is the role of the local plan to plan positively for settlements over the long term. This includes providing suitable opportunities for settlements to grow in a sustainable manner whilst also seeking opportunities presented by new development to contribute positively towards the specific needs of places. The strategy for Much Wenlock, captured in policy S13 of the draft local plan, seeks to do this by allocated land to enable the town to grow at a moderate and appropriate pace over the next 18 years, whilst also seeking to reduce existing levels of flood risk both on and off site. Whilst the local plan provides the principle for development on sites and has been informed by proportionate evidence, it is for the subsequent planning application process to ensure the proposed development on the site meets the development guidelines, including the delivery of a substantial community benefits by way of flood alleviation. The draft local plan has been informed by a range of evidence, including a two stage st strategic flood risk assessment and a water cycle study. These provide information on the likely flood risk of potential site allocations from all sources of flooding and the implications of development on water supply, wastewater collection and treatment and water quality. The evidence will be available to view through the consultation process on the draft local plan. The decision made by the English 7 and Y Coastal Committee in January is separate to the local plan making process and has not been influenced by it. It should also be noted that the type of flood mitigation being proposed through this mechanism known as property flood resist resilience, PFR, is focused on the installation of products on the flood affected properties themselves rather than dealing with the root cause of the flooding. The developer led solution, which would be sought through the delivery of the proposed allocation of land at Hunter's Gate, would seek to bring the properties out of flood risk rather than adapting them to deal with the challenging challenges of continuing flood risk. OK, thank you. Item uh, uh, question three is from Helen Hill. Uh, Claire. Yes, thank you. Why was a decision made on the 21st of January 2020 by the English Seven and Y Coastal Committee to reallocate the money which was ring fenced to provide flood relief to Hunter's Gate? to other areas in the county, claiming a developer-led solution will be sought. This site has been considered unsuitable, unsuitable for development and dismissed by government at least twice in the past for reasons which still apply, leaving Hunter's Gate residents and other homes in the town unprotected from flooding. Thank you. Uh, again, Rob Macy, Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? Thank you, Leader. As I, as I said, I've covered that in my previous previous answers, so I'd refer them to, to that with the reference to the English 7 and Y Coastal Committee. OK, we move on then to question four from Mr and Mrs Harris. Claire. Thank you, Leader. Why are Hunters Gate residents who pay the same council tax as other residents of the town being told they can only have flood defences if additional homes are built, 
whilst 2.1 million flood defences were built on Stretton Road and the Scythe without the need for additional houses. Thank you. Rob, Rob Macy. Again, that's that's another one I've just covered through the through the previous response. OK, we move on to question five from Roland Breen, Claire Porter. Claire. Thank you. Why, in view of the flooding history of the site, should residents have any confidence that the proposed development will not add to the problems of the site or that the ne necessary remedial works will be rigorously undertaken by any developer? Uh, right. And again, to Rob Macy, the portfolio holder. Rob. Again, picking up on the, the flooding history and so on, that that's in my previous answer given as well. Right. Um, I think the next question is from Richard Byfield. Uh, Claire thank, Porter. Thank you, Leader. Much when Wenlock is at the highest point in a water mains loop, which includes Brosley and all of Telford. When the pressure drops for any reason, much Wenlock and Homer are the first places at risk of losing supply. On several occasions in recent years, water has, has had to be tankered in to supplement the town's water supply and we have needed huge truckloads of bottled water to be distributed to the population, causing noise and disruption to residents. The increased rate of building in Telford and the proposed developments at Ironbridge, Cressage and Bridge North will only exacerbate this. Given this critical part of the town's infrastructure is not secure, and while existing homes cannot be adequately supplied with water at times, why is much Wenlock deemed to be a sensible place to build a large housing development? Right, uh, Councillor Rob Macy, Rob? Uh, I'm afraid that one as well around uh, town's water supply and so on was covered as well in the in the last answer. Right, we move to question seven, which is from Sheila Allen. Uh, Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. Why is this scheme considering allowing ingress and egress to the site through the existing Hunters Gate development, mentioned in Berry's plans in tiny print but denied verbally by their representatives, routing traffic onto the already congested narrow Barrow Street, making it a potential, potential rat run and yet more hazardous to both drivers and pedestrians and cyclists? Thank you. Right, um, we're back to Rob Macy, Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? Okay. Um, policy S13.1i of the draft local plan proposes that a new roundabout will be provided from the A458 to provide adequate ve vehicular access. This access point will be funded by the developer. Should any subsequent planning application propose a secondary or alternative point of access into the site, this will need to be fully justified through the development management process. Right, moving on to question eight from Mary Phillips. Uh, Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. As you are well aware, there is no obvious way of improving the flow of traffic at the Gaskell corner. Have you considered the additional pressures that will be put on the already notorious bottleneck, not just from 120 extra homes here, whose residents will be using that junction to get to work, but also from developments in Taisley, Cressage and Buildwas? What measures will you be putting in place to mitigate the already unacceptable level of pollution and congestion at the Gaskell corner? Thank you. OK, um, so we move on uh, to um, Rob Macy to respond. Rob? OK, um, the impact of development proposals on the local and strategic highway networks have been considered by the Council in proposing land for allocation in line with the requirement of national guidance. This also includes the potential of sites to deliver opportunities for sustainable forms of transport. This information is contained in the site assessment process, which has informed the preparation of the draft local plan and which will be made available at the consultation. A site allocation in the local plan seeks to establish the principle of development on the site. However, as is the case with all proposed site allocations, further detail will be provided by the applicant through the development management process and therefore a planning application would be required to demonstrate that any impact on highway safety or the residual cumulative impacts of the road wet network would not be severe. OK, question nine is for Maureen Williams. Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. Despite works, works recently at the sewage station to make the processing greener, it is at capacity and could not cope with additional homes. How will Seven Trent fund and address this if more homes are built? Thank you. Uh, again, to Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? 
Okay, the impacts and development on water supply, wastewater collection and treatment and water quality have considered have been considered as part of the Council's water cycle study, which has informed the preparation of the draft local plan. This has been undertaken in consultation with Seven Trent Water and forms part of the evidence base for the local plan and be available to view through the consultation. Where it's been identified that there is a, a requirement to upgrade an existing provision, this will be funded by Seven Trent Water as part of their capital programme. Okay, uh, I, uh, question 10 is from June Oates. Uh, Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. The primary school currently has demountables for classrooms and is at capacity. What plans are in place to deal with the additional children from this development? Thank you. Uh, again, I'm going to ask Councillor Rob Macy to respond. Rob. Okay. Uh, the impact of proposed development on future education provision in settlements has been considered in discussions with the Council's education services. Where necessary, developer contributions from development will be used to either support extensions to existing education provision or support the funding of new provisions. OK, moving on. Question 11 from Graham Lewis. Claire. Thank you. Please place on record and detail the ground, grounds and evidence for claiming exceptional circumstances as a justification for including major development within the Shropshire Hills areas of outstanding natural beauty at site CST021 in the Shropshire Local Plan pre-submission draft, draft document. Thank you. Uh, right, Councillor Rob Macy to respond. Rob? Okay, um, the exceptional circumstances for major development in the Shropshire Hills area of outstanding natural beauty will be made available as part of the evidence-based material as part of the consultation into the draft local plan. Okay, thank you. Question 12 is from Ron Parnell. Uh, uh, Claire, Claire Porter, Thank you. Claire. I believe that during the initial informal stage of the consultation process held between the 29th of November 2018 and the 31st of January 2019, 272 written objections were made to the planning department regarding the proposal to allow development on the Snatchville site CST021. However, only 62 responses appear to have been taken into account for that for the statistical analysis. Could I ask what people will need to do in order to ensure that their views are properly accounted for and fully taken into consideration now that the process is being formalised? Thank you. Councillor Rob Macy. Rob. OK, um, we acknowledge there was a significant objection to the allocation of CST021 at the preferred option stage of consult consultation. Whilst the scale of response, including levels of objection, are of course considered, it is the material issues raised which are of greater value to the local plan process. To this end, the Council considers, whilst there were errors in how some objections were categorised in the consultation summary report, each comment has had due consideration, including all responses relating to the site CST021 in Church Stratton. Question 13 is from John O'Dowd. Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. Can the council consider making any approval of MUW 012 for development depending, dependent upon a report from a hydrogeologist not recommending against development? I write as a concerned resident of Much Wenlock regarding two matters, which please include in this meeting. Firstly, the target for new houses has suddenly been raised from 150 to 200 without consultation or explanation. This is wrong. Secondly, regarding MUW 012 revive, revised and risk of flooding on that site. It would appear to be negligent of the council if it simply accepts proposals on surface water runoff and situation and chooses to try to ignore the issue of rising water. A proper hydrogeologist report really should be required when considering whether MUW 012 is suitable for development. Thank you. Right. Question 14 is from Helen Hill. Claire. Oh, no, hang on. I bet we haven't no. had the response to the last Le one. First, so Rob Macy first, Rob. Sorry, Leader. That was the final one that we covered earlier on in regards to much Wenlock and the flooding and water cycle studies and, and so on. So I'd refer them to that answer. Right, 
sorry, I'm getting mixed up with numbers. So I, uh, question 14 is from Helen Hill. Um, Claire. Thank you, Leader. Please find and close the petition, and I understand uh, members have seen this, uh, members of Cabinet, which has been sent to Much Wenlock Town Council by concerned residents in Hunters Gate and the immediate surrounding area. We are demanding that immediate action is taken to alleviate the flooding Hunters Gate has experienced in 2007 and, to, and 2020, which resulted in homes and garages being flooded. Residents are agreed that whilst flood defences have been installed and measures for householders provided to the north and east of the town, nothing has been provided at Hunters Gate, which has had a known flooding issue since 2007. Despite three technical surveys, no action has been taken and we understand that the funding allocated to solve the problem has now been spent elsewhere. We consider that we are being bullied since we are told the issue will only be solved if additional housing is built on land adjacent to Hunters Gate. Other flood defences in Much Wenlock have been built without the need for additional housing. We also fear that additional housing will add to the problem, not solve it. We are demanding to be treated the same as other residents in Much Wenlock as we pay the same rates and taxes. Thank you. OK, Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? Again, sorry, I said the last one was the, the final one to refer back, but we had a question from um, Helen Hill earlier about the Coastal Committee, and this is the other part of that with Hunters Gate, which I've already answered. OK, uh, question 15 is from Chris Tyler. Claire? Thank you. Mr Tyler's question concerns the Shropshire Council Open Space Sport and Recreation Interim Planning Guidance of the 22nd of September 2010. The guidance suggests a 10 minute walking time to leisure and recreational facilities. Why is MUW012 supported by Shropshire Council when it falls outside the recommended time to walk to all forms of recreation and services, including the library, surgery, church, public houses, playing fields and play area, as well as the William Brooks School, thus encouraging motor journeys? Further pollution and greater pressure on the already problematic area at the Gaskell Corner when other proposed sites within the guidance time are available, such as a combination of MUW001, 002 and 008. Thank you. Uh, I'm back to Rob Macy, Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? Okay. Whilst accessibility to services is an important feature of the sustainability appraisal and site assessment process which supports a local plan, the Council must look at the full range of considerations in arriving at conclusions on sites. The sustainability appraisal and site assessment process will be available to view as part of the consultation process. OK, moving on. Question 16 is from Alan Edwards. Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. Are you prepared to let Much Wenlock become a dormitory for larger industrial conurbations and damage its unique landscape setting and infrastructure? I contend the development of the proposed site is unsustainable. The existing infrastructure, infrastructure could not cope and the lack of local employment means residents will have to commute to more industrial areas many miles away, thereby increasing the carbon footprint, footprint and impact on the environment. We are currently going through unprecedented times. To my mind, one thing that has become abundantly clear through the COVID crisis is the need for greater self-sufficiency. How can any responsible body consider committing high class agricultural land for a housing development that is both unwanted locally and has the potential to significantly increase the dangers associated with flooding in such a high flood risk area? Thank you. Back to Councillor Rob Macy. Rob. Okay, thank you. The overall strategic approach is to provide balanced growth encompassing housing and employment opportunities. Whilst there is a focus on opportunities for employment provision in Shropshire's larger centres, the general approach to balanced growth is reflected in the strategy for individual strategies. In, in the case of Much Wenlock, policy S13 of the draft local plan provides the potential for two hectares of employment land on land identified in the Much Wenlock neighbourhood plan to support the delivery of the housing requirement over the plan period to 2038. Thank you. Um, question 17 is from Howard Horsley. Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. Under what dated resolution or decision record did the Shropshire Unitary Council unilaterally rescind its right to exemption from any obligation to contribute to the meeting of national government housing targets 
rather than simply meeting local need. This exemption, inherited from Shropshire County Council, arose from the agreement to make a large area of land available within the historic county for the 1968 designation of Telford Newtown, extending the area already, already designated for Dor Dorley Newtown, and was intended to expire only when Telford reached its target population of 220,000, a target not yet reached. Thank you. Uh, back to Rob Macy. Rob? Okay. Um, as a minimum, Shropshire Council should seek to meet its defined housing need, which is established through a nationally agreed methodology. Through the duty to cooperate process, the Council seeks to establish the level of any cross-boundary need with neighbouring and closely associated local authority areas, including Telford. In this instance, no cross-boundary need with Telford has been established. OK, question 18 is from Jim Bunce. Claire? Thank you. In respect of site CST021, many technical assessments are mentioned in the pre-submission draft local plan and are crucial to support the evaluation of the site's viability and deliverability. Such assessments are also required by the NPPF paragraph 172 for evaluating major developments in protected areas such as CST021. For CST021, please indicate which of the following have been carried out. A transport assessment, a detailed botanical survey, a heritage assessment, the definition of appropriate vicular access to the site, the definition of appropriate buffering for both the Jack Mitten Way and the mature trees on or in the proximity of the, to the site. If these have not been carried out, please confirm that they will be carried out and be available for scrutiny before the planning inspector reaches his or her decision upon sites within AONB. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? Thank you. The technical assessments mentioned will be needed at the planning application stage and the evaluation of appropriate vehicular access to the site and appropriate buffering are matters for the development management process. The need for these details asse detailed assessments has been informed by the Council's site assessment process carried out during the preparation of the local plan. Um, right, question 19 is from Trefonon Rural Protection Group. Claire? Thank you, Leader. When reviewed against current national and international health, social and economic circumstances, one, does the Cabinet believe that by using the economic growth strat strategy 2017 to 2021 as the basis of the draft final plan that it can be considered sound under examination? And two, does the Cabinet believe that the high growth housing target in the draft final plan is deliverable over the next five years by private enterprise beyond the control of the Council or central government? Will the Cabinet consider an amendment of the housing target from 30,800 to 28,690 until the next five yearly partial local plan review. Thank you. Again, I go to Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? OK, um, on question one, in, in ensuring soundness, a local plan must be positively prepared, justified, effective and consistent with national policy. It is considered the draft plan before Cabinet can achieve these requirements. The economic growth strategy 2017 to 2021, alongside a number of other council strategies, has been a material factor in the preparation of the draft local plan and provides important local context to the vision and strategic approach delivered through the draft local plan. On the second question, on the first part of it, it is considered that the housing requirement proposed in the draft local plan can be delivered in a sustainable manner through the strategic approach to the di distribution of development. And on the second point around the numbers, it is considered that the housing requirement is appropriate for the county. And on this basis, a change is not proposed, but of course, this is still subject to further consultation and examination. Right, moving on, question 20 is from Bridge North Town Council. Claire Porter, Claire. With regard to site allocations in the local plan review, why is there no mention that Bridge North Town Council prefers future development to be at Stanmore and is opposed to the Taisley Garden Village proposal? Further, why have points raised by the Town Council in its detailed submission dated the 10th of June not been addressed in the report 
being presented to Cabinet. Thank you. Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? Thank you, Leader. Um, just a point of clarity. I think the question, looking at the question I received, was from the CPRE, but it was around Bridge North Town Council and their, their response. So um, the views of all the parish and town councils are an important part of the plan making process and recent views expressed by Bridge North Town Council as part of the Regulation 18 stage of preparation have, of course, been considered. It is equally acknowledged that the Town Council's stated views differ from those of the conclusions of Shropshire Council officers on the proposed direction of growth for the town. Whilst it is not considered necessary for the Cabinet report to have specifically addressed this, there is a general acknowledgement in the report that there have been instances where local consensus has not been achieved. Thank you. Um, question 21 is from Jane Rylands. Uh, so Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. What is the rationale for weakening the council's current open space policy contained within SAMDEV MD2 that stipulates that all developments should provide at least 30 square metres per bedroom? The proposed draft policy DP16 proposes a new flexibility on quantum and an assertion that the council will adopt the notion of quality over quantity when considering open space within new developments. No indication is given as to what sort of spaces will constitute the exceptionally high standard of provision, which will warrant a reduction in quantum. This amendment would remove an important safeguard against overdevelopment and appears to be nothing more than a knee-jerk reaction to current litigation against the council regarding interpretation of its current open space policy. I fail to see how this new policy can support other policies within the new draft plan and appears to be contrary to the principles of of SP1, the Shropshire test. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, we go to Rock Councillor Rob Macy to respond. Rob? Okay. It is considered that the combination of the draft policies, DP15 on green infrastructure and DP16 on open space, provides an appropriate and robust basis for the provision of good quality open space within new development. The quality of open space provision will be assessed based on the individual merits of the site. But it is equally important to note that the draft policy states that the fragmented parcels of open space will not be acceptable. The Council's green infrastructure strategy, which will be available at the consultation, will provide further information on how the objectives of green infrastructure can be achieved in settlements. OK, thank you, Rob. Uh, question 22 is from Charles Green of CPRE. Uh, Claire, Claire Porter. Thank you. One, will Cabinet send figures back to be redone in order to avoid them being found unsound at public examination? Two, how can members form a, a view as to the soundness of the pre-submission draft without sight of this mass of new evidence? Three, in view of the extent of all this new evidence yet to be published, the continuation of COVID-19 restrictions and the likely overlap of this consultation with that of the draft housing strategy Will this consultation be extended beyond the proposed eight weeks? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Rob Macy. Rob? Um, on the first question, the plan seeks to deliver around 300 hectares of employment land over the plan period 2038 to ensure balanced growth. It is acknowledged that the delivery of employment can be challenging and the draft local plan has sought to tackle this by seeking to allocate additional employment sites within Shropshire's main towns only above those allocations already provided in the adopted SAMDEF plan. It is acknowledged the amount of land proposed to be allocated for employment purposes exceeds that which is sought to be delivered. It is considered this is important in order to ensure sufficient choice and competition to the market, to deliver on the urban focused approach to growth and to ensure the plan provides sufficient flexibility for changing circumstances. Um, in answer to the second question, it is acknowledged that the draft local plan is a product of many pieces of background evidence. It is the role of officers to consider and prepare the draft local plan, taking this evidence into account. And answer to three, it is considered that the proposed eight week consultation over August and September is sufficient to allow the public to have their say in proposals in a meaningful manner. Right, thank you, Rob. We move on to question 23 from David Cooper. Uh, Claire, Claire Porter. Thank you. At the Cabinet meeting on the 15th of June, I asked if I 
if it could be confirmed that no new proposals for sites which had not been subject to a Regulation 18 consultation would be included in the proposed pre-submission draft of Shropshire's local plan. The answer I received was that no such assurance could be given. The draft plan for the Bridge North area now includes a site allocation for 1,050 dwellings, 16 H employment land, a new local centre, 20 HA green infrastructure, a 19 HA linear park, and 41.5 HA land, which would be used for future growth beyond 2038. This entire site area is southwest of the A458, mostly on land which has not previously identified as potentially developable, developable under the Strategic Land Availability Assessment. The proposal only emerged in March this year, over a year after the preferred sites consultation was concluded. Please can you explain how consultees, including the public, are able to make an effective comment on the appropriateness or otherwise of including this site within the limitations of Regulation 19 consultation and its emphasis on the overall soundness of the plan? Second question is that paragraph 5.62 of the draft local plan on page 175, a statement about the highways infrastructure in the Bridge North area is made. This appears to be saying that there is a potential impact on the entire highway network around Bridge North from this development proposal, but the Shropshire Council isn't clear as yet what it is or what improvements would be needed. Under the circumstances, how is the Council able to reach a conclusion about the appropriateness of the proposed scale and location of future development around Bridge North and support a prop proposition that an appropriate pattern of development for the next few decades has been identified. Thank you. And again, I'll go to Councillor Rob Macy, portfolio holder. Rob? Okay, in response to question one, um, the local plan has been subject to a number of consultation stages as part of its development. And there has also been an emphasis on ensuring opportunities for more localised engagement where specific issues have been raised including where additional sites have been proposed for consideration. All this consultation and wider localised engagement carried out during the Regulation 18 stage of plan preparation has helped to shape the draft local plan before Cabinet. Whilst the Regulation 19 consultation process is focused on the soundness of, of the plan, there continues to be an opportunity for the public to state whether they feel the proposed strategy is positively prepared, justified, delivering an appropriate strategy taking into account all reasonable alternatives, effective and consistent with national policy. And in answer to question two, the allocation of land for development should be supported by proportional evidence. In this instance, both main development options in Bridge North at Tasley and Stanmore, covered in Appendix 2 of the Cabinet paper, have been accompanied by transport statements, which have been taken into account in the wider site assessment process. It is accepted that the allocation of the land for development in the local plan establishes the principle of development, but it is important that through the development management process, the development guidelines which accompany the allocation should be adhered to. In the case of Tansley, it is proposed this includes the preparation of further master planning work and the preparation of a supplementary planning document to be used as a material planning consideration. Right, thank you, Rob. Uh, Question 24 is from David Coe, Claire Porter. Claire? Thank you. Offices are recommending allocation of a site at Taisley to accommodate all of Bridge North's house, housing growth, plus a modest area for employment at Stanmore. A garden village at Stanmore to deliver a cohesive new community with housing and employment was previously the council's preferred option. Consultation brought rev revision to ensure that County Park was not, not touched. Why has there been a complete about face and why has Stanmore Garden Village been removed? The questioner then goes on to uh, support this question. That's the end of the question. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, Councillor Rob Macy, Rob. OK, um, Appendix 2 to the Cabinet report provides a summary of material planning consideration officers have taken into account in reaching their conclusions in the Tasley and Stanmore options. Officers have also directly engaged with the local town and parish councils on this matter and have welcomed the debate and views raised on this issue as part of the Regulation 18 stage of plan preparation. 
which have all been considered. The upcoming cons consultation will allow further consultation on the draft local plan and will allow the public and others to raise comments on how appropriate they feel the proposed strategy for the town is. OK, thank you. Uh, the last question, question 25, is from Michael Burton. Claire Porter, Claire. Thank you. I live in Chelmet Drive, Church Stretton. Whilst this means that one could be seen as an automatic objector to the Snatchfield site, I have genuine concerns about the potential impact its development would have on the AA AONB, which makes the town a special case. And based on my knowledge and experience, do not believe it is to be the best approach to, de deliver, to delivering affordable housing. Do, do you agree that the snatched, Snatchfield site is not the best means of delivering affordable housing in an area of outstanding natural beauty? Uh, then there are a list of points that are made um, by the questioner, which I understand all cabinet members have um, received. He then concludes in his question by saying, I do hope it will be seen that whilst my objection to the Snatchfield site could easily be thought of as the inevitable resistance of a nearby householder, I am truly concerned about the need to protect the AONB and that the special case it creates is not being adequately recognised and believe affordable housing can be provided in Church Stretton by means other than open market housing. This being based on my working full time in the sector. Thank you. Uh, and before I go to Councillor Rob Macy, I just would like to confirm that all cabinet members have had all the documentation uh, available to them for a while. And, uh, and as far as I'm aware, everyone has read it and, and gone through lots and lots of documents. So we are all aware of all the different information about all the different sites. So Councillor Rob Macy to respond to the question 25. Rob. OK, um, Shropshire Council considers that the most effective means of delivering much needed affordable housing in Shropshire is to provide a variety of different, a variety of delivery mechanisms, the suitability of which will vary from location to location. In Church Stretton, it is considered that the delivery of affordable housing through a site allocation will complement that achieved through mechanisms such as affordable exception sites and cross subsidy exception sites. It should also be noted that open market housing can, can also contribute to meeting local needs. The need to safeguard landscape and the scenic beauty of the Shropshire Hills AOMB will be addressed through an evidence-based document setting out an exceptional circumstances argument, and this will be available during the consultation period. Uh, thank you, Rob. Uh, that's the end of item four, which are public questions. And therefore we go to item five, which is questions from members of the council. Uh, there are two member questions. The first is from Councillor David Turner. Councillor Turner, are you available? Yes, yes, I am now. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you, Leader. Um, the question is there, and I rather suspect that given that you've heard from quite a lot of much of Anlock, um, residents, you probably don't want me to read that. Um, I'm very happy to do so though. Uh, no, I think we can all read it. So I think we'll move to Councillor Rob Macy to respond. Uh, Rob. You there, Rob? Sorry, I was on mute after all those other questions. So it is the responsibility of the Shropshire local plan to plan appropriately for the period of 2038, which is 12 years beyond the end of the current plan period for the Much Wenlock Neighbourhood Plan. Once adopted, the Shropshire Local Plan will form part of the development plan for the area, alongside other adopted or made neighbourhood plans, including the Much Wenlock Neighbourhood Plan. Where there is a conflict between the two plans, the most recently adopted plan takes precedence. However, in this instance, the Shropshire Local Plan has sought to both acknowledge and reflect the principles of the Much Wenlock Neighbourhood Plan within the proposed strategy for the town, captured in policy S13.1 of the pre-submission draft local plan, which specifically states the policies and proposals within the neighbourhood plan which conform to the local plan continue to apply. The proposals for Much Wenlock will be subject to independent examination by the planning inspectorate in the same manner as the rest of the Shropshire local plan. The proposed site allocation at Hunter's Gate has been subject to site assessment and is considered this represents an appropriate strategy for the town. 
In the absence of any formalized agreement on a review of the neighborhood plan, there is currently no agreed mechanism for the community to plan effectively beyond the current end of the neighborhood plan period in 2026. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the next question is from Councillor David Vasmer. I'm sorry, Lady, do I have a, a, an opportunity? Oh, sorry, for yeah, the, yeah, yeah, you can come commentary. back, yeah. Thank yeah, you very much. Yeah. Um, I'll endeavour to get this out of the way fairly quickly. Um, I, I'd just like to go back on, on that one. I, and I do recognise Councillor Macy's uh, comment about um, the absence of a formalised review of the neighbourhood plan. However, um, Shropshire Council consulted on the preferred scale and distribution and development at the end of 2017. The proposed housing guideline was 150 over the plan period and given that much Wenlock's neighbourhood plan for 2013 to 2026 growth guideline was 130 dwellings this felt like a sensible number given that the start point um, was later than I think it started 2016 doesn't it it reflected the housing growth being experienced in the town and its likely trajectory over the extended plan period Following my intervention at the Cabinet meeting on the 18th of October 2017, I thought that the Neighbourhood Plan's aspirations would be respected. I believe that my trust has been betrayed because here we are with the Local Plan Review Housing Growth Guideline for Much Wenlock, a third higher than originally proposed, for Shropshire Council, but proposed by Shropshire Council, introduced into this review without prior notification or consultation. The prospect of that guideline being breached early in the plan period is very real and as the portfolio holder will know from an email I sent yesterday um, it seems very likely that we shall exceed the 200 guideline by 2025 13 years before the end of the plan period um, I'd does the portfolio holder agree that the local plan review is not only driving a coach and horses through the much well neighborhood plan but is also cynical in its cons consultation with the local community on the growth guideline and its preferred site, which has in entailed presenting one option, ignoring the response and instead imposing a substitute that has attracted still greater objection. I'll ask Councillor Rob Macy to come back, but uh, I think that was a slightly unfair question, but Rob? Um, as it is, Bet Leader, I, I don't agree with that as a view. Um, obviously, this consultation period and the plan process is there for people to give theirs, and I'm sure Councillor Turner will be very articulate in, in giving his during that process. Um, but obviously, since that point, the plan has been extended two years and officers feel that this is the, the level of development that is required to deliver uh, what I responded to in the public questions, which is around the flood alleviation measures uh, for the town. OK, we move on. Now it's Councillor David Vasmer. David. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, what consideration has been given to climate change in drawing up the local plan? Councillor Rob Macy to respond, Rob. OK, um, climate change has been a key issue in the preparation of the local plan, and this seeks to reflect the ambition to move towards a zero carbon economy. This is reflected in the overall strategic approach, which seeks to focus the majority of new development into Shropshire's more sustainable urban areas, thus reducing the need to travel. The choice of site allocation, which has been influenced by the outcomes of the sustainability appraisal, and perhaps most obviously in the introduction of new draft policies, SP3, climate change and DP12, minimising carbon emissions, which both seek to improve the sustainability standards of new development in both energy performance, but also the production of on-site renewable energy. Okay. Now David, you, you have got a, a two part question. So if you like, as part of your supplementary, would you like to go on to question two? Yes, yes, thank you. Um, given the importance of the local plan to many communities, leadership role members perform and the fact that the consultation period covers the whole school holidays, while we're still dealing with the limits on social interaction caused by COVID-19. Could council review the following? Is decision not to provide members with printed extracts from local plan and be new ways of engaging the public such as social using social media uh, right councillor rob macy to respond rob um, the council need to be particularly mindful of consulting in an appropriate manner seeking opportunities for all communities to contribute however we also need to be mindful of the need to use resources effectively and to this end, it continues to be considered that we should minimise the amount of physical paper copies of the plan produced. And I would hope that would refer back to the previous question about what are we doing about climate change as well. 
OK, thank you. So that's the end of item five, which are member questions. Mem uh, question uh, item six is scrutiny items, and there are no scrutiny items. Uh, therefore, I'll be inviting the portfolio holder to present the next item, which is item seven, Shropshire Local Plan Review, pre-submission consultation document. And I'm going to invite Councillor Robert Macy as portfolio holder for housing and strategic planning to explain the purpose of the item. Rob. Thank you, Leader. Um, so the principal purpose of the report is to seek cabinet approval for the pre-submission draft of the Shropshire Local Plan and to agree that this is subject to a further period of consultation. Um, it also seeks agreement in principle that as part of the duty to cooperate process that Shropshire Council agrees to accept an element of the Association of Black Country Authorities up to a maximum of 1,500 dwellings and for this to be incorporated into that overall housing requirement for Shropshire to 2038. Thus far, the pre-submission version of the plan has been subject to four previous stages of consultation as part of the Regulation 18 stage of the plan preparation. Um, the draft plan before Cabinet today included as Appendix 1 to the report sets out a positive future direction for development in Shropshire. It looks at our housing and economic needs in the long term and seeks to address those and the needs of our residents. The draft plan is the culmination of a huge amount of preparation, cons consultation and evidence-based collection. It has also been informed by discussions with parish and town councils, infrastructure providers and adjoining and closely related local authorities. It is considered that the draft plan establishes a sound and sustainable strategy for the county, which has been positively prepared and presents an appropriate strategy for both the county as a whole, individual settlements, and it is deliverable and consistent with national policy. With that in mind, recommendation A of the Cabinet report, therefore, is being asked to consider progressing the draft plan to the statutory regulation 19 stage of plan preparation which seeks people's views on the soundness of the plan. However, it is noted, as you will have seen from the public question section, that there has been some discussion over the potential for Cabinet to consider consulting on the draft local plan as a whole, as prepared to do this as part of an additional informal consultation stage, as part of Regulation 18 stage of plan preparation. Now, it's at this stage that having considered this issue carefully, it is my view that we should respond positively uh, as a council and that this would present a ad useful additional stage to allow people a view of the full draft version of the plan before the council seeks statutory views on soundness. Now, just to be clear, this doesn't change the proposed content of the draft plan contained in Appendix 1 to the Cabinet report. If this is agreed by Cabinet, this will require a proposed change to recommendation A on the report. Under this scenario, the intention will continue to be to consult for eight weeks over August and September with a Regulation 18 stage consultation. Following this, and having considered the views made, the intention would be to bring the plan back to Cabinet for agreement to progress to the Regulation 19 stage of consultation in the autumn ahead of a proposed submission to the government in early 2021. It's therefore proposed to amend recommendation A that is in front of you to read that Cabinet approves the pre-submission version of the local plan for a period of public consultation under Regulation 18 of the Town and Country Planning, Local Planning England Regulations 2012, in order to seek representations on the soundness of the plan. As I said earlier, I have given this some some considerations from the, um, the questions and other things that we received. It does allow us to respond positive. We are listening to our communities and this would be a good opportunity to demonstrate that. Moving on to recommendation B to the Cabinet report that deals with the duty to cooperate process. A requirement for all councils to carry out as part of their plan preparation process. Specifically, the report asks for Cabinet's approval in principle of accepting up to 1,500 dwellings from the Association of Black Country Authorities as part of their ongoing preparation of the Black Country Plan. This is part of the effective and ongoing joint working between strategic policy-making authorities 
that we must enter into in producing plans as part of our duty to cooperate. Further to discussions with the Black Country authorities, it is proposed that Shropshire housing requirement to the 30,800 dwellings incorporates this 1,500 dwellings to support an element of unmet housing needs that is emerging. It is considered this offers this offer responds positively and constructively to the needs and an area with close um, sorry and provides an opportunity for Shropshire Council to accommodate this need as part of the overall housing requirement and to distribute this need in line with the agreed pattern of development outlined in policy SP2 of the local plan. Just briefly turning to the content of the draft local plan, it covers four main areas. The first is a strategic approach to growth and distribution of development alongside other strategic level policies, including climate change, high quality design, managing development in the rural area, and delivering sustainable economic growth. The second area is full range of development management policies, including identifying new proposals to secure improvements to the mix of new residential proposals, as well as importantly, the delivery of additional levels of affordable and lower cost housing, supporting the economy and town centres, managing and protecting the natural and historic environment, minimising flood risk and ensuring water quality is maintained. It also seeks to protect the Shropshire Hills of outstanding natural beauty and the county's greenbelt, ensuring infrastructure provision, including through appropriate developer contributions, supporting opportunities through development for people to use outside space for sport and recreation, and ensuring waste management and mineral provision. Part three is the localised strategies for individual settlements, including main, town, main towns, community hubs and community clusters. And part four is the strategic settlements and sites encompassing the former Ironbridge Power Station, Clive Barracks at Turnhill, and land at RAF Cosford, principally for military purposes. The Cabinet report focused specifically on the issue of the Greenbelt release, as it is recognised as a significant policy consideration. In being consistent with national policy on the issue, the local plan is only recommending the release of Greenbelt land for development or future safeguarding where it is considered an exceptional circumstances argument applies. Where the local plan has sought to release Greenbelt land, the exception, exceptional circumstances case will be consulted on as part of the upcoming process. With that, I'm happy to move the, the recommendations, but making the change to the wording, which would mean just for the clarity of cabinet, we wouldn't be moving to a reg the formal part of the process in regards to the local plan ahead of submission to the government, we would undertake a Regulation 18 uh, consultation to allow all the communities to give their views on the entirety of the plan before we move to the, the formal stage. OK, thank you very much, Rob. Uh, I'm going to ask Council Gwillem Butler to second that. Gwillem. Um, thank you, Leader. Yes, I'm very happy to um, second the recommendations as um, Rob has put forward, um, especially the amendment that's been brought forward and it does show that we're listening. I think there are issues around Bridge North and much when look, especially in Bridge North as certain items came to the table very late and we now have the opportunity to understand them in greater detail and to ensure that they are deliverable, um, engaging further with landowners and developers, etc. So um, I fully support the recommendations and put it to the Cabinet. Thank you. OK, thank you. Uh, I've got several members who've requested to speak and I, I've got a list, so I'll go through the list and we'll do those before I move to, to the Cabinet themselves. So I've got Councillor Tom Biggins first. Tom, are you around? Yes, yes, I am. Thank you, uh, Leader, for allowing me to speak. Um, I represent with Peggy Mullock uh, the Whitchurch North Division on Shropshire Council. Uh, I'd very much like to please request the removal of WHT 037 and WHT 044. This is a prospective housing allocation of about 200 dwellings from the pre submission draft local plan and that the development boundary in this area of the town is actually maintained as it exists already in the local plan. Um, I've sent a document which I hope cabinet members have been able to view and um, take into account. Um, 
showing what I'm proposing as an amendment. Um, there are a number of reasons for this. The Chester Road area has been saturated with new housing as a result of the failure of uh, Shropshire Council to have had an adequate land supply a few years ago. None of the sites that have been built on went through the local plan process and literally hundreds of properties were built. In addition, Tarpley Road has had the new large Mount Farm estate built, which was in the local plan. This part of town really does need a rest from any more house building during the terms of, uh, during the time period of this uh, proposed uh, the next local plan. I think it's important that we maintain the existing green wedge between Tarpley Road and Chester Road. We people do not want to, my constituents do not want to see Chester and Ro Chester Road and Tarpley Road joined together in one urban mass that will that literally destroy the character of the area and in fact create a rat run. WHT037 and WHT044 flood regularly. A picture is attached taken by a local resident of water lying on this land earlier in the year. And the other item that I have sent through to you is actually a, a photo shot from the Environment Agency that shows that these fields in question are classified as high to medium risk of flooding. And, and, I, and I'm very, very concerned about this. So um, I hope very much my comments will be taken on board and that these two sites will be removed from the local plan at this stage. Thank you, Leader. Uh, thank you, Tom. Uh, I think it's important now to, to emphasise that because we're going to a Regulation 18 public consultation rather than Regulation 19, that will be your opportunity to, to, to feed that into the system and then it can be considered in, in the round with all the other sites. Uh, moving on, Councillor Paul Milner. Paul? Thank, thank you, uh, Leader. Thank you. Um, again, I, I share um, uh, major concerns with many residents in Oswestry about the inclusion of OSW 017 as part of the local plan review. Again, as highlighted in the previous speaker, this is also a site that floods. Uh, it's, it's, it's also a site that's parkland. Uh, and it, it also is just, just outside the conservation area. But the extra traffic will uh, generated by these houses, uh, and also I wouldn't be I can't comment on it now, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's future development on this site in the future, as this is probably phase one. So I do share a lot of uh, concerns with residents, but I have several questions that I'd like to put to off officers. Um, obviously, I understand that they will be. Uh, replied by via uh, email later on uh, in due course. But the questions I'd like to ask is on numerous occasions, officers have stated to not just myself, but to also local residents that other sites should be proposed to enable OSW 017 to remove from the local plan review. Many sites have been suggested by the residents and myself, but there's been no indication that these sites have been reviewed at all by Shropshire Council. As you know, Mile End uh, has been identified for at least six to perhaps 800 houses. And this is a, a more sustainable area close to the bypass. Uh, you wouldn't have to go through town. Uh, also, the, can the council has made major infrastructure investment there. And it's also located in an area of Oswestry which has already been developed, <laughs> for mi uh, identified for mixed use with the prospect of new schools and other public facilities in that area. This site, would consider, uh, this site would provide considerably more housing than OSW 017 without the challenges and, and issues that this site would raise. So why is this site not being identified in the plan? And um, when will it be considered and included within the plan to end the council's pursuit of a, of a dangerous and more or less sustainable option of OSW 017? 
The assessment process of this site has been demonstrated uh, at incorrect figures which have been sent and, and also applied to items such as the proximity of children's playgrounds, nurseries, outdoor facilities, independent living complex for the elderly and also amenity and green spaces. Will, will the authority revisit these assessments and, and the process to ensure that obviously there's no legal challenge in the future on this site? Also on road safety, it's also been identified as an ad inadequate as the pinch point outside the primary school in Upper Brook Street. I'd just like to ask really what ac actions are currently being taken to address the dangers to children and other pedestrians on this area as as residents, uh, motorists are already going on the pavement to, to pass each other, the, the pavement's too narrow, so really it needs to be addressed before any more development and perhaps another 40 cars being added to already busy, busy road. Also on the development, with the proposed developer of OSW 017 originally asking for a larger scale of developments, what were the reasons for the planning uh, or for the planning office of Shropshire Council for insisting that the numbers were reduced? And what are their thoughts on maybe a large amount uh, of development on this site in the future? I, I'm glad, as I said, to be able to put these questions to you. And I, re I would really ask for for any support in taking OSW 017 out. out. They're, they're only uh, 30 houses, but these 30 houses will make such a difference to an already busy area and, and the safety of children as well as pollution. Uh, we've also sent material reasons uh, which are highlighted in the MPPF uh, to officers, so we're waiting for those replies which we've not received. So really I would just like to ask for support in taking OSWO 17 out of the local plan review. But thanks again, Leader, for listening to me and giving me the opportunity to speak. Thank you. OK, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. Uh, uh, again, I think this will be uh, dealt with under Regulation 18, and I will ask the officers to respond in due course when they, they've got the, the answers uh, together. Uh, right, next one is Councillor David Vasmer. David. I don't have another question, Lee. Uh, Lee. Oh, right, that's fine. Uh, David Turner. Thank you. Um, thank you very much, um, Leader. Um, I wish to touch uh, very briefly on Brosley's place in the local plan review. As you know, a neighbourhood plan is emerging for the town and it's anticipated it will be completed in 2021. Brosley is represented by Councillor Simon Harris and me. And we've agreed that I should commend the approach being taken during the course of this meeting. I'm pleased that the planning policy team apparently consider the emerging neighbourhood plan is broadly compliant with national policy guidance and advice and that it will continue to it will contribute to sustainable development and is also broadly compliant with the current and emerging local plan review. As a result of consultation with local residents, an allocation has been made at Avenue Road and it will be complemented um, by appropriate small scale windfall residential development within the development boundary. Um, new de employment development, I understand, will be delivered through the saved SAMDEV. And I, I, I just want to um, ask the portfolio, ho po portfolio holder um, and, and put on record whether we can rely on the continuing relationship between Brosley and its emerging neighbourhood plan and the draft local plan review um, as it has been um, running so far. Thank you very much. I think in this case, I'm going to ask Rob Macy if he's got any comments on that. Rob? Um, only other than to add, as as the member said, as Councillor Turner said, it's it's an ongoing process. Um, we do have relationships with Brosley and with others, um, and we are constantly talking to him. This period of Regulation 18 will allow us to continue those conversations and that dialogue. So realistically, yes, we want to move forward we've just given one more opportunity as well to really work through that before we get to any stage of submitting the local plan. So hopefully everything complements itself across the whole of the plan, including neighbourhood plan. Thank, Thank you. Thank you both. Thank you. Right. Uh, next on the list, I've got Councillor Michael Wood. Michael. 
Am I there? Uh, thank you, Speaker, uh, 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 leaders rather. Uh, apologies, but I, I missed some of uh, Rob Mace's uh, earlier comments regarding the, amend, the amended recommendations um, because of technical reasons, and I've just been out of action again. But can I have a little bit of clarification, please? Uh, I understand we're now going for a Section, eight, a section 18 review um, um, uh, uh, as part of the, as part of moving moving onward. Um, in the respect of Bridge North, whilst I'm uh, interested, obviously in uh, in other parts of the county, I'm mostly interested in Bridge North uh, and the allocations therein. Um, can Rob confirm for me, please? that not only will we be taking a, a, um, a, a, a look at the TASLI recommendation, but also that we could also be looking at the, the overall numbers of recommended dwellings in Bridge North, whether it be Stanmore, which has a, 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 an expectation of somewhere in the region of 850, or whether it be Taylor Wimpy, which has the expectation of 1050 initially, we still have to consider the Hickman proposal on the on the um, the, the, the site of the uh, of the uh, cattle market, um, which is another 500. So I'm making the suggestion to you that I would like it to be war to be broad enough for us to look at those those numbers, 1500 or 1350. Still a huge amount of dwellings for the Bridge North area, which will have the effect of changing the whole of Bridge North. Uh, between in the next 20 years beyond all recognition of what it's what it is today so i'd like to think that not only can we look at the two sites uh, as as um, as a opposition to each other but also we can look at the actual numbers because i think that, that not only with the the consideration of, of of most of the protest about the highway structures the impossibility of the a442 the 458 454 which is now subject to more and more accidents and flooding at Hilton. So we've, we have got some serious problems, whichever way the, 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 the chosen site may be. So some reassurance really, Leader, um, on the fact that we will be getting the opportunity to go back to numbers as well as sites. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure exactly of the answer to that, but I have got all four Bridge North members on my list. So I'll go through those and then I'll, I'll ask the portfolio to, to respond generally about uh, the situation around Bridge North. So next on my list is Councillor Les Winwood. Les, are you around? Yes, good morning, Leader, and good morning, members. Thank you for letting me speak. Um, first of all, I wanted to say that you may have seen in the press a group of members from Bridge North and Brantley voiced our opposition to the Tasley Garden Village proposal. Um, Les Winwood and Elliot Lynch from Bridge North West and Tasley, William Parr and Christian Lee from Bridge North East and Astley Abbots, and Robert Tyndall from the Brown Clee. And we ask really for, your, for our uh, comments to be taken into consideration today, um, in line with the views of many of our residents in Bridge North, Tasley, Morville, the Lyon and Underton, who are opposed to the possible selection of Tasley Garden Village over Stanmore as a, uh, as a location for the future development. Um, the Taylor Wimpy site at Tasley is, a, is a, a considered a step too far for our residents from our historic town of Bridge North and the residents of the rural parishes of Tasley and Morville. Under the old Sam Deb proposals, as Michael Woods just relayed to, um, up to 2026, 500 homes were, were due to be built and are still live in Tasley um, on the livestock market site and the livestock market with the associated industry, industrial park, would move over the A458 onto the now suggested Taylor Wimpy site to form a small industrial park. Um, what we're doing there, if we're not careful, is the Taylor Wimpy site would put the livestock market in, in jeopardy and the jobs that go with the industrial area. The, the highways, um, and it's inescapable that there is and will be a large number of commuters from Bridge North to the Birmingham stroke Black Country region, placing, pla <coughs> region, sorry, placing the Stanmore Garden Village on the east side would, would aid calming traffic in an already congested Bridge North and make it easier to travel to Telford, Wolverhampton, Stourbridge and Kidderminster, thus preventing all the traffic travelling through town and onto the busy road network if you built at Tasley. 
we have concerns about the potential conflict between housing and the mineral deposits beneath Morville Heath uh, and at the quarries at Morville and Bridgewalton. And we're concerned about the important wildlife corridor from Tasley through to Morville and Underton and Underton and surrounding area. And the concern of the Shropshire Wildlife Trust too are very concerned about this matter. It is our view that Shropshire Council pursue the release of Greenbelt land at Stanmore as the best means to extend our industrial capacity and to allow the Stanmore Garden Village to be built. This is by far the best to cover the town's housing need and the surrounding area up to 2038. I appreciate that we have certain um, issues uh, uh, around all, all sites that would be built around Bridge North, but we're concerned uh, really about the network, the road network, as Michael Wood has just relayed to, that we are going to be in great difficulty with, with Bridge North, with the movement of traffic, and also um, how, how possibly can we accept this such late application from Taylor Wimpy uh, and, and consider it without proper consultation. Leader, I do hope our comments will be taken in, into account that the five members who put that press release out are considerably um, distressed about the whole matter um, and we felt that we, we had to say something, but I do hope you'll take our, our, our comments into consideration. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, thank you, Councillor Winwood, and I can assure you all comments will be considered. Um, and actually, it, what you're saying is part of the reason why we're going back to Regulation 18 consultation, so that everybody does have a complete opportunity to make sure they can feed into the process. Uh, next on my list is Councillor Elliot Lynch. Is Elliot around? I am indeed, Leader. Um, thank you, Leader. Hello, Members. Um, I don't have a question, but I would like to make a statement, if I may, that will echo um, Councillor Winwood's um, words that we just heard. Um, and really, the statement is just to echo and, well, or shall I say, to add my own concerns regarding um, the current uh, poor consultation for the Tasley development that we've had um, over the very informative and inclusive one um, that has been conducted for Stanmore. Um, I would like to note, please, that the consultations um, conducted in Bridge North Castle Hall last year made very clear to residents that development to the west of Bridge North were unsuitable as it would lead to a further sprawl across the open countryside and force a large volume of traffic through the town um, as opposed to developments to the east. Um, just to conclude on that brief point, um, it is my view that the proposed developments for Tasley is unsuitable for the number of homes combined with the potential of the SAMDEV developments that Michael Wood and um, Council Woman have mentioned um, in the proposed location um, in the planned timescale. Uh, and that's all for me. Thank you. OK, I'll, I'll move on to Councillor Christian Lee. Christian. Uh, hello, Alida. Christian is away and asked to give his apologies. OK, uh, and then uh, also on my list was Councillor William Parr. I don't know whether William's around. No, doesn't sound like it. I, I also had on the list Simon Harris from Brosley, but I suspect David Turner said uh, said Simon's uh, piece when he spoke. So unless uh, Simon shouts loudly, we're going to move on. Uh, no, right. So other than that, I've got Councillor Roger Evans. Roger. Thank you, Peter. Um, mine's going to be mainly general and not specific to any site. Can I say I welcome the Cabinet decision to actually look at this and bring it back to Cabinet because uh, there are some significant changes and one of my questions was going to be what is considered significant significant in the report, but I think you have answered that. But a couple of questions from myself. Um, the point system that is used to designate hubs, there is some concern about it and especially because of the, uh, the climate change and the C19 crisis we are still involved with will these be looked at and will any representations made be looked at as part of this uh, 18 consultation um the 30,800 houses which are mentioned in it in the report i see there is also a a, a comment in it about the 25,894 houses I presume the 30,800 is the updated numbers. Sometime, can it be detailed 
what this includes because I assume it now includes the 1500 allocated from the Black Country, the 1000 from Iron Bridge and the 600 from Turn. But can it be confirmed somewhere how this 30,800 is made up and also, as I say, about the point system that is being used to designate whether communities are a hub, a cluster or what or open countryside. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask Councillor Rob Macy whether he wants to answer or whether he'd like me to bring in Eddie West to try and give some, oh, uh, some yeah. information. Sorry. Sorry, Peter, there, there, there was one more as an add on to that and you may be able and Rob may be able to answer it. And that is, is there any indication of when the cabinet would consider the regulation 19 consultation to be carried out? And I'm assuming that it, the local plan will be going to council in February now instead of December. Thank you. I, I might be able to help with that. We are. We might need to have a special cabinet meeting over and above the ones already in the diary, and we're thinking probably in November that we'll we'll ask the question about Regulation 19. Uh, so I, we suspect it'll be November, and um, not all officers will be aware of this, but we are looking at whether we can have a, an extra council meeting in January to finalise the situation. It might need to be the beginning of February, but I'm conscious if we leave it till the end of February, that is also the budget meeting and there's only a certain amount of work we can do in one go. So I think there will need to be a special council meeting either in January or early February to confirm uh, where we stand with the local plan. So that's that side of it. Um, Rob, did you want to try and answer some of the rest or shall I try and get Eddie to do some of it? Um, I was going to say in, in terms of time scale and stuff, it, yeah, as the leaders set out, we're just taking a bit more time stepping through it and, and so on. I think in terms of what's in scope, how the overall figures are made up and so on. I think Eddie is, is the best person to bring <coughs> just to just to cover those points in more detail. OK, thank you, Rob. Uh, um, yeah, you Go on then, Eddie, yeah. OK, thank you, everyone. Uh, it's Eddie West here. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak on this and just trying to respond to uh, Roger's comments there. So in terms of the uh, uh, in terms of the what is scope in terms of the how uh, how a community hub has been uh, identified uh, the, the, that is related to a piece of evidence that we put out uh, which accompanies the local plan uh, we would be happy to receive comments on on that again if if people thought there was a a new position which uh, as officers or the council we need to factor in. Uh, I would point out the fact that that has been through various rounds of cabinet approval in the past and uh, I would say as an officer continues to be a sound basis for identifying uh, those, those areas in the rural area capable of accommodating an element of growth. But in terms of, of responses at the now proposed uh, uh, new consultation, uh, yes, we would welcome welcome any other views people have. In terms of uh, the way the numbers are are made up, particularly with this proposal to accommodate up to 1,500 uh, houses uh, from the Wolverhampton area as part of the association or, or in terms of that, that area uh, as part of that cross boundary on met need. Uh, that would be taken into account within the proposed housing requirement for Shropshire. So it is, it, it is not as well as the housing requirement. It, is in, it, is incorpor it would be incorporated within the housing requirement for Shropshire. Does that, does that is that clear enough, Roger? And that answer your question. Yeah, I, I would suggest that if it's not actually Roger and, and, and Edward West get together and, and have a meeting to, to sort out some of the numbers because they are difficult to understand uh, without having it, all of the information set out in front of you. But Roger, I'll give you a chance to come back quickly if you want to. No, I'm, 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 I'm happy to discuss it outside, but as part of this uh, consultation on this 2018, can it be listed 
fairly prominently in the introduction to it or something how the housing numbers are made up i think it would be that would be very useful to uh, the public and to members okay yeah right um right moving on next on my list is councillor dean carroll dean thank you very much leader and thank you to councillor macy i I'd, I'd also like to very much welcome the the move to turn this into uh, a reg regulation 18 consultation on the local plan review as has been referenced there are a number of sites that have come in since the first partial regulation 18 review um, consultation was carried out so i think it's very important that that we go through the full process with with that uh, that brings me on to a uh, concern I have about a um, site allocator which is in my division and I'd like to thank Councillor Macy and his officers for receiving exhaustive and extensive um, representations from myself and Councillor Pitts and the other local member in regards to this case. I'm quite quietly confident that with the time that this consultation now allows Hours and with alternative sites that we believe are superior and most importantly on the right side of the bypass that that we can come to um, that we can work this out and 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 arrive at a better site um, so I absolutely welcome this and we will continue to to lobby and campaign on that note. OK, thank you. Um, now the, I've got one more name on my list um, before we go back to the portfolio and second. Um, uh, Councillor Robert Tyndall. Robert. Thank you very much. Can everybody hear me? Yeah, yeah, you can come um, through loud and clear. Thank you. I just wanted to ask, um, is Rob Macy allowing an extra period or consultation or was this a, a fresh consultation and whichever it is what will the actual procedure be thank you okay uh, I'll ask I'll ask Rob to respond in a minute but basically we're going back to regulation 18 propose a uh, consultation so yes you can feed in whatever you like um, into that consultation because it's not so much about the process it's about the various sites uh, and that will give you an opportunity to to talk to officers or to feed into officers um, Gwilym Butler seconded Gwilym you've been very quiet Do you, I, I'm going to give you the opportunity to say anything if you want to now Thank you. Thank you, Leader. I think I actually said it when we started and it's been reiterated that uh, I think our amendment is totally correct and it gives the opportunity for clarification in the areas of the county um, where people want more time. Thank you, Chair. OK, so and I'll go back to Rob Macy, but I just want to make it clear about the time scale. So Regulation 18 will go for a couple of months, probably till about the end of September time, and that will be an opportunity for people to feed in views on the wider matters of the plan. We then will give the officers a, a few weeks to actually consider all those uh, comments. And in November, we hope to be able to move then to Regulation 19, which is a stricter um, public consultation, more about procedure and, and making sure we, we do everything properly. Um, so, and then from then, it'll take about six weeks for that consultation, a, a, a little time for the officers to respond to whatever, any points that have been raised. So we're hoping by beginning of February, we can actually finalise the whole of this matter with a special council meeting. So that's the sort of time scale. But the, in theory, there are two opportunities for people to, to feed into the process. Right, Rob, Councillor Rob Macy. Thank you, Leader. Um, yeah, just just confirming that this is and taking Robert Tyndall's point. We've already done four stages of regulation 18 consultation. They're all an informal um, stage. This is adding an additional stage of that. So in total, by the time we arrive at the plan we want to consult on to send off to government, we now will have done five separate stages of consultation. Um, so this is in addition to what was proposed. Um, 
And really, it's just a case leader of I'm, I'm conscious I didn't come back after the Bridge North members all oh, sorry, spoke. Yeah. Um, so it was just I think most of the points around what is in scope for the consultation have been covered. Um, but really, it was to, to thank them as local members. And we've heard from members from Shrewsbury and Oswestry as well, who are, are doing a great job at representing their communities. They are asking those questions. We are listening to them. They've now got the opportunity to get out there and, and make the case um, for their local areas and, and see where they're at. But we do think that what we are publishing is, is a draft plan we could submit to government. Um, it is up to people if they want to change our minds on, on elements of that. Um, and we look forward to receiving their responses. Um, and I also welcome Roger's comments of it, it's nice to know we've got the support OK, I lost you a bit there, okay. Rob. Yeah, I'm um, sorry. Yeah, it, it went on to mute automatically. So um, so with that, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to move the recommendations. Um, obviously, we can provide more clarity out as we've referenced. Um, Salk and town and parish councils and others will be informed. We will put together a briefing note for members as well to make sure that they're updated with what the process will now be and we'll get those out as soon as possible to them. OK, thank you. And that's seconded by Councillor Gwilym Butler. Uh, now, because this is quite an important document, I am actually going to go name by name through the cabinet just to confirm people agree or don't agree with it. So I'm going to start with uh, Gwilym Butler and, and can you say agree or, or disagree? Uh, Gwilym? Agree, Leader, thank you. Lee Chapman. Agree, thank you, Leader. Steve Charmley. Yes, I agree, Leader. Dean Carroll. Agree, Leader. Steve Davenport. He's gone to sleep. Um, where have we got next? Robert Macy. Agree. David Minery. Agree. Leslie Picton. Agree, Leader. Right, well, I agree. Uh, Ed Potter's on the list, but Ed has declared an interest and is taking no part in this discussion. So of, of so eight out of 10 have agreed. Uh, so that's clearly carried. 